Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690-300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Pastor Mai, good evening. It's half past five. This is Update for Wednesday, 9th of August, 2023 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes to look at the latest news on the Isle of Man. A background to that news and sport and business and sea watch and travel updates and the newsmakers in person. This evening, the MV Manxman starts earning her keep a week tomorrow. What's gone wrong with Braddon Leisure Centre? The latest on the National Insurance Fund. Who wants to recycle Peel Marina silt and a big golf qualifier at Mount Murray and Castletown today and tomorrow? Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Faster my William King. Faster my. A doctor from Douglas has been banned from the road after being caught drink driving. Nikhil Sharma of Central Promenade was stopped on Old Castletown Road just after 1am on the 22nd of July. The Isle of Man Steam Packet Company has announced the date of Manxman's first commercial sailing. The £78 million vessel will carry passengers from Thursday the 17th of August. The Treasury Minister says changes need to be made on how government uses the National Insurance Fund. Alex Allenson says money from the reserve could be invested to boost the economy and strengthen it for the future. In international news, police in Northern Ireland have declared a critical incident after a data breach meant the personal and employment information of around 10,000 officers and staff was published online. Its chief constables cutting his family holiday short to deal with it. Officials in eastern France have confirmed 11 people have died following a fire at a holiday home for disabled people. Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne is visiting the scene on the border with Germany after it broke out early this morning. And Wolves have appointed Gary O'Neill as their new manager. He was sacked by Bournemouth earlier this summer despite steering them to top flight safety last year. Those are the update news headlines. Man Benham. Contact us by phone, video call, email or face-to-face. We're happy to connect with you. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Jeremiah, thank you, William, from the Ronalds Way Met Office. Uh, no wind warning in operation for the North RAC. State of Sea is smooth or slight and dry this evening and cloudy. Some coastal mist and uh, fog. Just a slight risk of some passing drizzle on a light to moderate southwesterly, but uh, nothing spectacular. Down to 16 through the night. And for Thursday, Jordan, tomorrow is cloudy and humid with coastal mist and fog patches and spots of drizzle on a moderate southeasterly up to 22 degrees tomorrow. A band of rain overnight, minimum temperature 15. And Friday will be dry with sunny spells, passing showers on a fresh south-southwesterly up to 19 degrees for the Royal Manx Agricultural Show, day one at Nokalo. Tight on the way back in, high waters at 28 minutes to 7, sunset 2 minutes past 9, low water is at 18 minutes to 1 a.m., sunrise 14 minutes before 6, high tide 5 to 7, Ben McCree's on the way and there's a delay on the London City at Ronald's Way tonight. Visit the Banks Glass and Glazing website and see a range of products from windows to doors, mirrors to splashbacks, manxglass.com. The new steam packet vessel MV Manxman will carry passengers for the first time a week tomorrow, Thursday 17th of August. The full story, William's back now. In March 2019, a new sea services agreement from the steam packet and the Department of Infrastructure set the wheels in motion for a replacement for the Ben McCree. At the time, it was reported that that would be by December 2021. At the start of 2019, the steam packet released a survey asking people what they wanted from the new vessel. The results included a wider choice of food and drink, more places to charge devices, a larger and more comfortable area for passengers travelling with pets, and a children's play area suitable for a wider range of ages. Fast forward to autumn 2020 and the steam packet called on the public again, this time to choose the name of the new vessel. The shortlist included Mona's Isle, Manx Maid and King Ori, and in December the announcement was made that she would be called Manxman. Work began in South Korea with the steel cutting in August 2021. She was first floated in April 2022 and began sea trials in December that year. She began her journey home in May, travelling through Singapore, Sri Lanka and the Suez Canal.
Canal and arrived into Douglas on Sunday the 2nd of July. Since then, she's completed birthing trials in Douglas and Hesham, paid a visit to Belfast and had the floors of the vehicle deck supplied with improved coating. She boasts the most environmentally friendly engines available on the market and a passenger capacity of 950. It all comes at a cost of £78 million. On board her first commercial sailing next Thursday will be people who'd already booked on that crossing, as well as 50 winners who entered a draw to be on her maiden voyage. Money from the Isle of Man's National Insurance Fund could be invested on the Isle of Man in a bid to strengthen the fund and boost the island's economy, so says the Treasury Minister, Alex Allenson, MHK, who's been telling a Tinwall committee the fund could run out if changes aren't made. The reason the NI fund was set up was to have a ring-fenced fund that Treasury Ministers couldn't dip into with, without a very good reason in Timwell approval and it was there to protect the ability for the, for the state to pay for people's pensions. Now what, what, at the moment the, the NI fund is, is close to a billion pounds um, what we've looked at in terms of Treasury is, is how big the fund needs to be and certainly in the past it's always been um, t- taken that, that the fund needs to be probably about to cover about two years' worth of expenditure. Um, so that would equate to around about um, 400, 400 million pounds. Um, what we need to do is look at that, um, the, look at the NI fund, look at the way it's invested, see if some of that investment could be on Ireland rather than off Ireland. To protect the fund, absolutely, but also to use it in the best way to incentivise the Isle of Man economy. And that's one of the, th- one of the things that we're looking at at the moment. Yeah, the but, but, but again, we need to be very careful how we communicate that, and it can only be done with the consent of Timwald. To hear this afternoon that this is something that's being considered will concern many people. How quickly do you think you're going to be referring to that as something that will be happening? It, everything needs to be cons- considered. Um, we, we've, we've just said that the use of reserves has to be done very, very carefully. But also, more what, what concerns me, Honourable Member, is when you look at the recent GAD report, the, the fact that if we carry on what we're doing at the moment, there may not be any NI fund in, you know, in, within the next few decades. This is the most listened to Isle of Man news source. And Manx Radio's update is the Isle of Man's most downloaded news podcast. Despite a number of delays, the manager of the new leisure centre in Braddon says the development is moving along well. Commissioners are asking the Department of Infrastructure for £3.4 million in financial support for it and the potential for rates to be increased to pay for it. Centre manager is Cassie McAllister. She says the roundhouse aims to be open on the 17th of November. So the development's coming along well. You know, even in the last four weeks, there's been a lot of progress with the site staff moving on to the internal work there's lots of doors, architraves going on, uh, finishing up with the plastering out the back there's a lot of earth being moved in preparation for the cafe, um, seating area and outdoor play equipment there's paths going in there really is a lot of activity on site at the minute so it's pleasing to see. We are looking at the 17th of November for handover and then following that there's probably going to be staged opening depending on the tenants and what they need to do to fit their units out in preparation for opening for business As with any of these projects, we do get stumbling blocks, but we are looking at the 17th of November. This centre is literally going to have something for everyone. I'll just give a quick run through of what's actually within the centre because there's a big impression that it's just another sports hall up the road from the NSC, and that isn't the case. So there is an amazing sports hall to begin with. The roof in the sports hall is set to competition standard, so it opens it up for a variety of uses. But you've got to remember this sports hall is not just a sports hall it doubles as an auditorium so it's got acoustic boarding throughout which i mean we haven't explored every possibility yet but as you walk into the center there is a pharmacy which is well placed next to palatine gp surgery there is a beauty therapist there are therapy suites one will be a physiotherapist the other one will be a spa type suite there's a hundred cover cafe as said with outdoor seating area there's a dentist brad and commissioners we're moving our offices up here there'll be 
a gym, there'll be a baby sensory unit and there's also a function room but when you take a look outside there's a sensory garden, there's a 500 metre walking track and there's a village green. This is literally going to be a gem in the heart of the Braddon community. The prestigious Northern Men's and Senior Men's Qualifying Championships in golf are being held on the Isle of Man today and tomorrow at Mount Murray and Castletown Golf Links respectively. Manx golfers Daryl Callister and David Kinraid explain the status and the calibre of the player these events attract. I've been very fortunate to represent the Isle of Man in this uh, many times over the last sort of 10, 12 years. Um, and the thing that I remember most is the, is the quality of players that competing it, compete in it. So we've had Tommy Fleetwood, Danny Willett, uh, Matt Fitzpatrick, and last time it was on the Isle of Man in 2015, we've had Alex Fitzpatrick and Matty Jordan, who recently had a good week at the Open. So I think the thing I remember most from it is just the quality of golfers that we, we get to compete against in this Northern Counties tournament. It's very uh, prestigious for, for the Isle of Man and the Golf Union to be able to uh, host this uh, the quality of the courses is certainly good enough on the Isle of Man and uh, it is uh, great that we're able to uh, hold hold these over here. It's probably the most pressure that I would feel as a as a Manx golfer uh, competing representing the Isle of Man. Although the Island Games is it's a really fun event and it's one we we compete in regularly. This one, the pressure you feel and the, the type of tournament, which I think is probably the hardest they put together for a, a scratch golfer, is where all six players every score counts that definitely increases the pressure on, on the players. But, you know, it, it makes it more enjoyable to be able to compete in such a, a quality style of event. The other counties have uh, infinite uh, resources of numbers of players to pick from, and uh, we have a, a limited number. But we, we, they, they're out there, they'll give their all, um, and uh, there will be some absolute quality golfers out there who, in future years, like Daryl just said, you'll see uh, on the telly. Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Motor vessel Ben McCree departed Hesham at a couple of past two. She'll be into the bay any moment now and onto the link span just before six o'clock, departing at 7.45, arriving in Hesham at half past 11. Overnight departures 2.15, back to Douglas at 6 tomorrow morning. The fast craft Mananan departs to Douglas at 9 minutes to 3. Uh, she's in Liverpool right now, on to the link span there, departing this evening at uh, quarter past 7, back to Douglas at 10 tonight. Tomorrow morning's departures 7.15, Mananan heads to Liverpool, 8.45, Ben McCree to Hesham. Like the Steam Packet on Facebook for the latest sailing information. A pile of silt, actually tons of it, dredged out of Peel Marinas, sitting in a nearby store. It's been drying out for years. Now businesses are being canvassed over the possibility of recycling the silt from Peel Marina. Here's Lewis Foster. An age-old question, what do you do with 23,000 cubic metres of sediment? That's what was dredged out of Peel Marina in the spring of 2020 and 2021. It's been in a purpose-built temporary storage lagoon next to Peel Power power station drying out ever since. The project aimed to shift around 44,000 tonnes of the stuff, but why did it need storing and not pushing out to sea? The infrastructure minister at the time, Tim Baker, explained. It's an incredibly complex situation because of the nature of the silt, the contaminants that are that are in there, particularly the heavy metals, which are largely a legacy of the island's mining, particularly, particularly zinc and lead. Well, now research has suggested that soil treatment and grading could improve the quality of the sediment to such an extent it would no longer be classified as waste. It would avoid the need for most of it being disposed of through landfill and provide thousands of tonnes of usable sand-like material for a successful contractor. The Department of Infrastructure wants to gauge interest from companies who would process an initial 16,000 cubic metres with the option to process sediment from ongoing maintenance dredging for up to five years. The department is seeking options on island, but off-island interest will also be considered. The timeline for the removal, treatment and sorting of the material would depend on the successful contractor's proposed facilities and methodology, and whether it already holds appropriate licences, including planning approval. 
Procurement closes on the 8th of September. Manx Radio Business Briefing. At 16 minutes before six, the gambling giant Flutter Entertainment reported a return to first half profitability today after a period of substantial growth, particularly in the United States. That shift was attributed to Flutter's leadership in the U.S. sportsbook market, where it commanded a dominant 47% market share. The strategic expansion into NBA basketball markets and the strengthening of iGaming as a proposition were also noted as contributors and for a full daily market report go to ramseycrookall.com a uk lithium mining firm secured 53 million pounds as an initial investment in strengthening the uk's lithium supply chain cornish lithium said the uk infrastructure bank was leading the funding package in its first direct equity investment others include the energy and minerals group emg and its largest existing institutional shareholder techmet the uk government wants to accelerate growth towards the commercial production of lithium, one of the UK's critical mineral supply chain, and of course itself vital for the UK's transition to net zero. Cornish Lithium intends to produce about 8,000 tonnes per year of battery-grade lithium. Lithium, of course, is used to make power cells for everything from laptops to smartphones and, of course, electric vehicles. The lithium hydroxide will come from hard rock in a repurposed China clay pit at Treleva Downs. The Stock Market Report, brought to you by Ramsey Cruz. UK and European markets advanced as traders digested China's disinflation and Italy's weakening of a surprise windfall tax on bank stocks in China and Hong Kong fell and gold prices fought traction as investors stayed on the sidelines. The numbers now from Ramsey Crookall at the close in London. The FTSE 100 up eight tenths of a percent at 7,587. The DAX in Frankfurt up half a percent at the close at 15,852. A short time ago, New York City the Dow Jones Industrial down four tenths of a percent at 35,173. The Nasdaq Tech Stocks Index down one and a tenth of a percent at 13,726. And the S&P 500 in Chicago down almost six tenths of a percent at 4,474. But of course, the trading day continues. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling trading at one US dollar 27.1 cents, one euro 15.8 cents, and 24 South African rand 15.5. Four cents in commodities. Gold's down four tenths of a percent at one thousand nine hundred and seventeen dollars per troy ounce currently, and a barrel of Brent crude up eight tenths of a percent at eighty six dollars seventy eight cents. You've got an investment plan. Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, and you pay in monthly as little as one hundred pound. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house, of the kids' education. A hundred pounds a month. I could easily do that. You should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. A doctor from Douglas has been banned from the road after being caught drink driving. Tessa Hawley was at Douglas Courthouse. Nikhil Sharma of Central Promenade was stopped on Old Castletown Road just after one o'clock in the morning on the 22nd of July. The 45-year-old had been reported by a fellow motorist who had concerns about his standard of driving. They claimed he'd been straddling the centre line and was being over cautious on minor bends. Police found Sharma parked up and sitting in the rear of his Mercedes. He failed a roadside breath test and was arrested and taken to police headquarters. At Douglas Courthouse, he admitted being one and a half times over the legal limit. The court heard he told officers he'd drunk one pint of beer at a work leaving do at a restaurant in Santon before the group had got a taxi to a nightclub in town. Sharma then offered to give a colleague a lift home due to the fact it was raining heavily and went to his home address to collect his vehicle. His advocate told the court he'd felt no ill effects from the drink he'd consumed, adding he's never been in trouble with police. This offence was out of character for him. It's something he'd never intentionally do, the advocate added. He's extremely remorseful for his actions. 
Fining him £1,200, Deputy High Bailiff Rachel Braidwood told Sharma, your decision on the night in question, I'm sure you'll agree, was a very poor decision indeed. Ordering him to pay prosecution costs of £125, she also disqualified him from driving for two years and until he's taken and passed an extended driving test. Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio Sport. Fast am I, Rob Pritchard. Fast am I. Good evening. In motorsport, Nathan Harrison will make his return to the Snaefell Mountain course this month as he steps in for fellow rider Lee Johnston at the 2023 Manx Grand Prix. Manxman Harrison will ride the Ashcourt Racing Honda RC45 in the Classic Superbike race as Johnston continues his recovery from an incident at this year's Northwest 200 in May. Harrison himself missed out on this year's TT and Southern 100 road races, having been injured in a separate crash at the Northwest 200. Nathan made his debut in the Classic Superbike race last year on board the Greenall race in Kawasaki, finishing second and setting the fastest lap of the race. Elsewhere, current sidecar TT champions Ben and Tom Birchall are currently recovering following a crash in the latest round of the FIM Sidecar World Championship at the weekend. The Mansfield duo were involved in an incident early in the main race at Red Bull Ring in Austria, which saw the race red flagged. In a post on social media, Tom Birchall says he's torn a ligament in his right shoulder and has begun treatment with some surgery to come. He adds Ben suffered some bad burns on his back from the tarmac. Tom is thanking fans for their messages of support. And Team Isle of Man's athletics and swimming competitors are back in action again today on day five of competition at the 2023 Commonwealth Youth Games in Trinidad and Tobago. Last night, Regan Corrin set a new personal best in the men's long jump final with a distance of 6.63 metres to finish ninth overall. He'll also contest the men's high jump tonight at 9pm Isle of Man time. His athletics teammate Jack Kinraid gets his games campaign underway later in the men's 800 metre semi-finals at around 11 p.m. Isle of Man time. Meanwhile, all three of the Manx swimmers have been contesting their latest heats in the pool this afternoon. In the women's 50-metre freestyle, Ella Justice won her heat in a time of 28.28 seconds, whilst in the men's 50-metre freestyle, Conor Meelan and Magnus Kelly managed times of 26.87 seconds and 25 seconds respectively. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound at Ronalds Way, the Logan Air 10 to 8 from London City will be in until 20 past 9. The 5 to 8 Logan Air from Liverpool on time. And the 25 to 9 EasyJet from London Gatwick is on time. So outbound, 6 o'clock Logan Air to Liverpool on time. The EasyJet will be returning to Gatwick at 5 past 9. And... uh, that uh, London City will be delayed outbound as well. On the roads tonight, the mountain roads close between 6.30 and 10.30 from Barul Park, Ramsey and Craignan Bar uh, for hedge and verge cutting in Kirk Michael. Three-way signals on the main road for snagging. Blackboards have still got those three-way signals for friction surfacing and line painting. In Port Sodrick, temporary lights on Quines Hill for ditching work. Glen Mona still got the patching works on the coast road. Some lights there and in Bold Dry and Ballygorn Road is closed for drainage work. Garth Road's close near Foxdale between Tossilby Road and the Foxdale Road for bridge replacement. And East Key Peel closed between the House of Manannan and the road bridge. The Ballymena Road in Jerby's got face closures. In Douglas, 24-hour lights on Victoria Road at the Falconcliffe Terrace Junction. York Road's closed between Woodburn Road and Ballaquail Road. Hillside Avenue's closed in Douglas. Temporary lights on Lake Road for work on the curbs. And lights too on the new Castle Town Road at the Annika traffic lights for telecom work. In Farm Hill, Annika Road and Cusher Road are closed for resurfacing. H&H Motorcycles.im for all your motorcycle requirements. Southgate Industrial Estate, opposite Keyside Tyres. Call 665646. A recent cash injection to Hospice Isle of Man will help with running costs, but it doesn't mean the charity is out of the woods. Last week, a retired entrepreneur donated a million pounds to Hospice. Though the money will help for a few months, Chief Exec John Knight says Hospice is under consistent financial pressure. Honestly, it's a huge amount of money, and we're very, very uh, grateful. I mean, to put it in context, the running costs um a million pounds would be about three months of operational costs whilst it's a huge amount of money and set against the context of the charity which is turning over five and a half million pounds a year it's a very big contribution but i wouldn't say it it sort of wipes away all the financial um challenges that that 
the hospice or indeed any large charitable organisation faces. We really appreciate the £1.2 million we get from Manx Care every year. And indeed, next year, that, that is due to rise to 1.5 million. And at the moment, it will be capped at that 1.5 million. But set against the 5.5 million I just mentioned, you know, clearly that leaves us the best part of £4 million a year to raise through voluntary means. So it's a big challenge each and every year to sustain the services that the hospice offers. The Manx community are the major player in funding all of that because they are voluntary donations and legacy donations, fundraising events and so forth. So, you know, it can't be understated just how important the community continuing to want to see a world-class hospice facility exist on the Isle of Man. I would say, having, having worked for charities all my life, that the truth for us is the payroll and the sustaining of a large team of nurses and doctors and so on that 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 amount of money is very quickly eroded if you don't keep up with your fundraising. Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates. A charity is calling on government to throw money at helping young people suffering with mental health. A little piece of hope claims there's currently a two-year wait for youngsters to get a diagnosis through the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service, CALMS. Trustee Helen Shepherd says they have six children on the waiting list for a diagnosis and are aiming to raise £30,000 by next year. The costs of a diagnosis range from £600 to £699 per child, so not affordable for most most parents so what we're doing we're trying to get them privately assessed so they can get a diagnosis privately once they are diagnosed then there's a quicker pathway via cams for support and also medication if needed parents who come to us and some of them have been waiting two years already some of them have been told there is a two-year wait uh, approximately until their child can be seen by anyone at, at cams and there is a lot of relief from parents when they know that they are on a, you know a step ahead of to getting a diagnosis for their child and getting the right and correct support for their child as well. We have, for a number of years, supported children um, with hospital travel and mental health. As we've kind of grown, as people have come to us, we've kind of seen a need for the assess for private assessments and due to CAM's long waiting lists that there needs to be, something needs to happen. We, you know, we spoke to Laurie Hooper when he first became Head Minister for Health. Parents were promised two, three years ago the waiting lists would go down and nothing really has changed from what I've seen. And the government really needs to look into this as well because, you know, there are charities around trying to support young people with mental health. You know, you've got us, you've got I'll Listen. Parent to Parent helps support parents through things but the government really need to stand up and look at what they can do on a financial and practical level that's it for update tonight compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department thanks to newsreader William King producer Rianne Evans uh, I'm Andy Wint back with another update tomorrow at 5.30 W-I-N-T